do believe we're live. So hello out there in YouTube land. Hello guys. Oh, look, there's Josh already. You guys are on the ball. Holy <laughs> cow. And hello Instagram people. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday tea read. Sunday yes. tea book. Oh, got mixed up. <laughs> so we're coming back to you again. Uh, right on time. Okay, mm -hmm. a little bit late, a little bit late, but come on. We're getting really close here. Mm -hmm. um, oh, who's there? Bruna. Bruna Palo Palomera. Hey, welcome. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the live stream, uh, Bruno. Mm -hmm. Bruno? Bruna. Oh, sorry about that. Bruna. Bruna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Welcome. And we're... today we're gonna sip some tea. Qian Liang Cha 2012. Every time when I see the same tea, last I week. always... Uh... Oh. I, I'm telling you, she really knows her stuff. It's just the, <laughs> the whole live thing. It's right. It's, yeah. it's really the live thing. It's getting me really nervous. Yeah, so same here. So the Tian Yang Cha 2012 mm. right here. And actually, I can just take it up. It's a little break. You may be wondering how we pick the teas that we brew for Sunday Tea Book. Mm. And uh, now that I said it this way, you might be thinking, oh, I can't wait to hear this complicated algorithm, how they decide the tea. <laughs> no. I book these all in advance and I think, oh, I would like to have that. I haven't had that in a while, so I yeah, put it on yeah, the list. Yeah. So I haven't had this one. We've been drinking lots of Tianliang Cha. I was thinking the same. Like I haven't, haven't had, had the one aged one in quite a while, so I'm super stoked to have that. So while she gets the tea going, I'll give you guys who are new. Uh, welcome, Zvivista. Oh, Zvivista. Zvivista. Mm -hmm. And welcome, Jesse. On the Instagram, we're just getting started with our Sunday tea book. We're brewing up some 2012 Tianliang Cha, and I'm gonna just give you guys who are new to the whole scene what's about to go down here because it's super cool and it's super exciting. So Sunday tea book is where Jen and I take uh, books, articles, or papers that are uh, written in Chinese uh, and we and they're hard to access, but they're full of great information about Chinese tea and tea culture, and they may or may not be translated. Uh, if they are translated, the translation is confusing. Otherwise, we might not come back to that. And we, we retranslate it. We go through it passage by passage with you guys so that you can um, get the information. But even more than that, you could always read a well-translated book and get the information. But in, in sitting with us and helping us translate by providing us with the missing words sometimes that we need or whatever mm. you're going to get a, a really deep insight into Chinese TNT culture and why why things are done the way they're done why certain words are used why confusion exists um, this is what I've been experiencing for the last you know four or five years as Jen has been kind of mentoring me in the deep and wonderful and wide world of Chinese tea. And I'm learning myself too, like it's yeah. really because uh, uh, we can really talk things to the basic. So a lot of confusion is really soft for me too. That helped me communicate mm. ba uh, better with the people who might be shy to ask or feel like, uh, I don't know, uncomfy to ask the questions. Right, kind of right. Thing. You can almost anticipate questions because you start to get a deeper understanding of what the Western perspective is. Mm, mm. We get a deeper understanding of the Eastern perspective. This is just a win-win for everybody. So chip in with your comments and questions um, and don't hesitate. Ask us anything. Be as detailed as you can with your questions so we can give you a really great answer. Um, so that is what Sunday Tea Book is. It was a suggestion from you guys. We're doing it and we're loving it. This is episode yes. nine. Yes. Unbelievable. And you guys can always uh, send us the messages or leave comment below and let us know what are the books or articles or anything mm -hmm. you want to hear uh, after we finish this book. I know this is still quite a while, but we're getting yep. some uh, suggestions which yep. uh, we're considering. Which we love. And uh, yeah, we love to hear what you guys yeah. are thinking. And maybe we'll find some stuff we didn't know was out there. Yes. So super cool. Absolutely. So. Maybe we can have a poll at the end and then everybody can vote for what they yeah, want to hear. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we're continuing on uh, China Tea, uh, the book China Tea by my mom, Jianli Wu. And today's content is mostly about uh, tea table and tea cup, so really interesting. And this is a great tea for people who uh, great tea. This is a great book for people who just getting into Chinese tea or totally those uh, who have been in Chinese tea for a while, picking up information here and there. And this book will help you organize, put everything in the right place. And with the work we're doing here, it helps. Uh, 
get the terms and names all sorted out and a clear Absolutely. baseline all of our terminology Absolutely. and our, our language mm. Mm. so um so with this book the way we're going to approach it because it's already translated i'm going to bring the book up onto the screen so all you folks out in instagram land if you want to if you want to watch the whole live cast we're going to have to sign off of instagram pretty soon jump over to our youtube channel because we're going to bring the book up on the screen i'm going to go through a, a passage um reading the english exactly as it appears then i'm going to bring up all my sort of questions and confusion points and uh jen will we'll talk to those and then um if anything was missed jen has read all the chinese content so if something was completely left out it's going to get covered as well so uh and of course down below there's going to be a link to the finished translation on our website so um so you'll be able to go and review it you'll have a kind of like a reference a reference to this book and to these uh to these uh live streams so if you are new and you uh think this is awesome don't forget to click the thumbs up on our youtube channel uh, and if you really want to support us a great way to support the channel and to support our content and to support your tea addiction is to hop over to our website and pick up pick yourself up some great tea mm -hmm. uh, maybe some Chen Liang Cha 2012 or whatever you can look ahead we let you know all the teas that we're going to be doing with the Sunday tea read so you could brew it with us if you want mm -hmm. i've got a little surprise for you later when we get into the uh brewing so you'll see what's coming up there but anyway <laughs> click that subscribe button click the thumbs up if you're on Instagram i'm going to sign off now we're going to jump over to YouTube so uh we'll get down with the Sunday tea book episode 9 see you later guys bye bye say bye bye <laughs> bye bye Alright, just gotta... Whoa, that's a lot of talk. Here we go. Ew. I'm not picking a good thumbnail, just a mm -hmm. Sunday tea book at nine. Can you guys see this guy one? Beauty. This is actually, I think this Can they see the guy one, you say? I will oh, tell here you, we go. they can here see the go. guy one. That's the surprise, guys. We introduced a bit of a... Uh, a, a brewing cam. Let us bring us back because we're pretty cute. There, now we're here. <laughs> Everybody's there. So, uh, Ooh. and let us know if you guys like the view. It's just I just thought of maybe bring a bit of right, brewing. Right. I know it's all about the translation yeah. today, but we can I share like a that. bit of the brewing. I like that a lot. I and, didn't uh, even know this is coming up. Yeah, I, I love to just keep the surprises for her too. I I heard him say, "Oh, this is too fancy," but I wasn't in the room, so I have no idea what's going on. This is awesome. This is like it has been my favorite guy one, I have to say even though it's mm. bigger for my hand like a slightly bigger for my perfect uh, for mine hands it's greater for you know gentlemen to brew just the pouring is just it's exquisite yes and we have a batch for sale it's all sold out now and uh, if mm. we might bring back more but this is absolutely gorgeous yeah and really and really thin color temperature thing. diffusion is Never really burns good my hand yeah Right? Yeah, a lot of people think that a thick gaiwan will protect them from the hot water, but in fact it's the opposite. It will initially because it takes a while to heat up, but once she's hot, she Forever. Ain't, she ain't cooling down. Mm. So um you want those thin china walls makes for a great pour, makes for a nice cool experience. Okay, mm. so guys, um let me get change my comments? notes. <laughs> yeah, let's see what Josh said there. There's one comment oh, yeah. about his I'm very excited for today. Great topic and also I was gifted a small amount of uh, uh Ao Fu Ho oh, Dan Tong. Mm. I somehow thought of mango when I saw that. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at our tofu. Our tofu. Our tofu. A tofu. A tofu. We always pronounce that wrong, and then we realize we're not saying it right. So don't, don't. Let's not talk about the mango. Anyways, don't talk about mango. Alpha ho dental, which I have never tried before. So it should be awesome. It will be awesome. It's a great cultivar. It's a relatively new cultivar. Mm, I'm looking forward to hear your notes, mm, Josh, mm. as you get into that. Yeah, let me know how your tea is. And you'll be happy to know, guys, that I didn't forget the mouse this week, so I won't be running off cam, and I'm gonna dive in. Yes, let's get started. All right, so as Jen said, we're doing China Tea, the uh, book written by Jen Li Wu, our tea consultant, and Jen's mom. We are right up to about here. We're in this. Oops, I uh, hit the mouse. Sorry about the zigzag, guys. But we're right in the middle of this pretty lengthy and excellent section, right? Mm -hmm. Essential tea sets for starters, right? Which mm -hmm. covers all the brewing gear you could imagine. So let's dive in. Today we're starting with. Dun da da da. Tea table. There's a beautiful picture of a tea table. Mm -hmm. 
tea tray. Mm -hmm. I always call them tea table, but tea tray. Right. Great. Tea tray has a best quality of self-restraint and tolerant. It is willing to be a supporting role, but essential. Only with tea tray can the pots, cups, and fair cup play a best play on tea culture. I'll do functions too, and then we'll come back. Functions. Yeah. Tea tray are the shallow containers that hold the teapots, cups, tea sets, and tea curios filled with water, filled with the water of outflow and discarding in the process of brewing. Okay, great. What's a curio? I have, uh, well, you can guess what it is because of, through sort of omission. So the tea curio is a, anyway, we'll get there. That was it. I think it's a tea pet. But, um, like curio, the word, I mean, just, oh, I don't know. I think it's a misspelling of uh, curiosity or something. I don't know. Because oh. I know the Chinese, it means like, uh, it's a translation of the tea pad here, but they call that curio. I don't know. I have, I've never heard that. I That's feel like I it's a saying. misspelling. Maybe somebody out there knows it if it's a real word. I didn't look it up because curio. I just guessed it's a tea pad and then forgot about it because I was like, what? But also self mm. self restraint and tolerant was in the first paragraph there, right? Tea tray mm. has the best quality of self restraint and tolerant. I didn't really understand <laughs> that at all. That's a trans direct translation of Chinese wording. So this whole thing has a little bit of uh, not say metaphoric, but has that flavor of talking because the character of a tea table is really a base, like how, oh, how, so not flamboyant, not, that's right, not stealing the show. Yes. The oh, whole show oh. is on it. It's like the stage, mm -hmm. right? A solid stage. It needs stage. to be elegant, but it doesn't need to be loud. That's right. That's okay. right. That okay. kind of a tolerant. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if a naughty teacup or a naughty tea pet come along, it doesn't lose its temper too quick. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. This tea, oh, I haven't had it forever. Right. Okay, we're a little bit, uh, we're going to wind in and out of the book, but I want to just talk about the tea for a while. The aroma is, um, it's a dark tea, right? So it's not a booming, you know, oolong-y kind of aroma, but it has this, this one I remember first tasting it. It had a really interesting effect on me. I didn't know how, mm. what to make of it. I found that it's not aromatic when I smell the liquor, but it's very flavorful when it's in my mouth. Yeah, and it has to go around. It's not if pale. If you breathe over it. Mm. Mm. Pale? I mean, it's not faint. Right. And it's pretty light infusion because it's the first infusion. And it's, it's really hard really, as a rock. Yeah, this it's a really one is, dense one. Oh man, it's pressed. Um, in fact, we sell it already cut into cubes because it's just like not fun to break. Mm has that mushroomy calming. I'm going to get totally zen during this session, I think, because this is so calming. I like the texture. Oh, a really nice, yeah, really nice thickness. Mm. Okay, back into it. Oh. <sighs> so function, right? I think the function is pretty clear. Um, there's a lot of words there, and it's maybe not the best translation, but basically it holds the tea set. Absolutely. and um, holds the water and or gets rid of the water so mm -hmm. pretty straight up for function i think that's what we all kind of know and expect from a, a tea tray absolutely i think it's understandable yeah it's understandable it's for sure quite a basic thing tea tray there's many translations and many names of this uh, this one on the book is called a cha pan tea tray is more translated like mm -hmm. that sometimes uh, some people call that cha hai almost like mm. tea sea s e a right or like the body ocean. of water yeah right, hai. Right. but uh, oh. Oh, i also heard somebody calling serving pot the cha hai mm. so um it's kind of a how do i say a ambiguous some, it is yeah especially in daily life sometimes you really have to ask uh what exactly do you mean like right right which you know? one yeah which one which cha hai yeah right so um and in english i've heard tea tray tea mm -hmm. table and mm -hmm. tea boat which tea, tea boat, boat is probably right. kind of on the cha hai edge right more like uh one's floating on the sea and one is the sea which <laughs> both have that metaphoric you know the tray holding water kind of thing i guess so i guess here i can switch you to uh tea table oh, oh here we go so there's the liquor color there. Right. You can see I'll move it on to the white. Put it up for you guys. Right. Zigzag. I still have to get my directions oh, sorted out. Focus. 
Oh, it sh Perfect. shoots into focus. Really yeah, nice yeah. Uh, second infusion here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys oh, know a touch this. Of, just a touch of smoke. Yeah. Smokiness, like maybe as it was. Oh. Mm. You said notice and then I realized I've interrupted you and now I'm yeah. so curious. No, it's just the pour. I just every time oh. I pour this guy one, it feels so good. I forgot to use the filter, but um, it can be really clean thing mm. and uh, delicate. It's yeah, just, like, a, I, like a waterfall fountain yeah, yeah. in the park, right? Yeah, it's just, really, it feels so yeah, it's a perfect happy pour. to use this guy one. All right. We're going to get on to the next section, types. Mm -hmm. T types. Uh, T types of trays can be various, such as big, small, square, round, fan shaped, monolayer, or interlayer. The materials are widely selected, like gold, wood, bamboo, or pottery, that are all desirable. Metal tea trays are simplest and the most durable, while bamboo trays are most elegant. Beside these, there are tea trays based on sanders, such as green sanders trays, black sanders trays, etc okay let's d dive into this it's a pretty mm. meaty piece so um types. different shapes Big, yeah the small. shapes i did i think that was different. pretty clear right yeah, and yeah. and if you've been around tea culture a bit or been around tea tables a while and especially into those shops right mm. sometimes you go in and they've got an ink stone with a really beautiful organic shape they don't all have to be square or round or symmetric right. some of them are or like in yunnan um, the, he had a giant mm -hmm. log with a tea table built into this right, big, right, beautiful right. log Lots table. Of tea, tea stores would have those. Yeah, too, and you'll the see big that. Ones in, so you know, basically, it's a basically it can be an art piece. Like these yeah, things can yeah. be super beautiful. Uh, so that didn't surprise me. The shapes mm -hmm. and all of those things, but when the materials are widely selected, like no. the first one gold, right. I'm like, what the? Who's so rich to have a gold tea tray? <laughs> is this a real thing? Does this it's make? It's not gold. It's metal. It means metal. Oh, it's just yeah. metal. Okay, then yeah. this is something you see really common as a really basic, uh, yeah. like the and shop. Yeah, the, the later it actually points out that the metal tea trays. Right. Are, yeah. So that one I totally got as right. normal metal we tea trays. We see that in the uh, Wulong area a lot. Yes, yeah, so we saw that um, in Pinghe. That was all those stainless trays. Very practical. Very durable. The yeah. shop, the Chinese medicine shop, the guy had his little metal yeah. tray set up at his stool. You know, it's a, it doesn't break. Mm. It doesn't crack. Yeah. It's zero maintenance. You know, it doesn't like a stainless out. steel sink. Yeah, that's right. If you leave the water in it for several days, worst case, scrape that out yeah. and start over. Uh, scrub it with a pad, right? It's mm -hmm. very durable. I don't see them much here. No. Actually, because they're very, they're so practical. People here are kind of looking for something more elegant. When they get into that, they are not looking for practical. Those yeah. are people who just every day, it's just like my toothbrush. As yes. daily as it's that. It's just as daily as brushing the teeth. So yeah. we're not looking for anything fancy. Basically, yeah. is it five yuan or less? Rock and roll. Yeah. Nice. So, um, and other part was the, yeah, metal stainless. So that... Sand interlayer also kind of got me. I was, I think, so mono layer and interlayer, I think it's just sometimes you see the water flows straight off the top and sometimes yeah. it goes down below. Yes, is that's, that what, that's exactly okay, okay, it. Perfect, so. Just because of the second layer is not clear like the floor, like the building, you see first layer, second layer. The second layer, like our tea table, mm, maybe that it. could be shown. It's slightly like a hidden. It's not obvious. See, you don't look at from the front. You don't see it at all. Yeah, but you might think it's just one thing, but it actually have another layer, right? So no, that's no, no, no. why we call that a jia Let me I go think... to the big one. Here we go. This... You guys can uh, see better now. Okay, so like that. So that's why we call that jia rather than just call that double layer. But that means that there's another layer, kind yeah. of thing. Right. And uh, interlayer, I wasn't sure what that means. Yeah, they mentioned double layer later, which I think is a better word in English for that. Because um, mm -hmm. it's a two layer. You never have like a three or a five layer tea tray, although mm -hmm. that might be pretty cool. And then the other thing that I found a little confusing, or a, no, I didn't have any clue what it meant, not confusing, is um, there are tea trays based on sanders. What the heck is a what sanders? Is sander? Like just English, does that mean anything? That here? means nothing. That's oh. a. It's a wood. It's a. Oh. We call that sander wood. Is that sander wood? Is it? 
You probably don't know that. There's a such thing as sandalwood. Oh, sandalwood. Sorry, my bad. Sandalwood. Yeah, I oh, looked it up. This is ebony, isn't it? Ebony. Yeah, yeah. This is not. I don't think sandalwood okay. is ebony. Oh no, they're different. Yeah. Uh, here is the thing. Wood is a big topic. So in general, this mini section means it uses wood to make tea table as well. Mm. Uh, this is more culturally a uh, um, cultural thing because the type of wood they use are pretty uh, good wood, durable, hard mm. wood kind mm. of thing. And um, like here, I found uh, when we talk about wood, a lot of times it's alpine or cedars mm. and Absolutely. stuff. There's a lot of those uh, tropical, extremely hard wood and stuff mm. that are used there. So it's uh, you mean for tea table. For for tea table and for the cultural uh, love kind of thing. Right, you guys so, like those exotic woods. Yes. Right. So the we sometimes so we would have something more like a uh, uh, the uh, not nickname, but in the daily use we know that name, but doesn't really refers to the exact botanical term oh so it could, right okay you know what i mean like it's a little bit uh right whereas we're gonna if you have an oak chest or a cedar chest or an oak table right we're gonna call that by the same name as the tree is yeah, really yeah, clear yeah. or maple hardwood floor or oak hardwood floor it's not we don't have that nickname you have a little colloquial name for yes. the wood type yes yes Be i see and because it's like a big thing and expensive ones are really expensive mm. then you have the marketing thing that some wood are close even though they're totally different sections and they will have really similar names and stuff it's a okay so, so it's quite complicated i don't know how to explain that well yeah i think, I think i'm kind of, of i'm going to try and feel it out because this seems like an interesting cultural point to maybe dive into a little bit because first there's this concept and tea is a great way to unveil it or, or kind of realize this but if you look at going off topic but I mean, it's not really off topic but if you look at yeasting teapot we mentioned last week if mm. you buy a yeasting teapot new you pay x dollars for it if you take great care of it and it lasts you for 20 or 50 years or maybe it pass on to you from your mother or your grandmother mm. and it's 100 years old and really well cared for that pot is super valuable this is not unheard of in western culture but it's really big in chinese culture and i think mm. a lot of western people might not know that and i think the wood is kind of a similar thing because it's a really you buy a stainless tray it will last forever if it's 200 years right. old who cares you buy a wooden tray and it's really well cared for it's something beautiful right uh yes i know just to okay. mean the the our love for wood overflow to the tea region that's mm. why we're making that into the tea table that's it because okay. the wood is its own culture it's just as oh, big as tea culture okay and you have a, you probably see that some chinese people have those wooden mm. bracelets and stuff you know the good ones are like a half million and stuff right right really not made of pine <laughs> okay those gotcha. those trees are in tropical mm. and they grow extraordinarily slow right because so, their wood is so dense. and they're hard mm. Right. They sink in the water. They have their mm. own smell. They have their their beautiful, right, right. you know, patterns, and they become glossy with wood. Anyway, that's a total other topic. But what I mean is, this wood using wood for this is a lot of times a connection with the wood culture, wood loving right, culture. Right, right. Okay, which is a deep culture. Cool. Let's go over to the comments. There's right. lots of lots of uh, stuff shot out there. Um, so Josh, a long time ago said, oh, that's so interesting. A curio is a really old fashioned word from, I believe, Victorian times or even older. Mm. That means a strange or unique item, sometimes oh. called a curiosity as well. There we go. Oh. So it was based in curiosity. And that's what they meant. So like a tea pet. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think you're right about Victorian times. I think I might have come across that in one of the vampire books I read. <laughs> they were... No, I think that sometimes, you know how I want to say something. I don't know the English term. I look it up, then I end up with a, using a really weird uh, An obscure word, word right? Obs yeah. That I... Like curio. Mm. So curiosity shops were quite popular with items from people's travels, bringing back exotic objects to collect from afar. And these were all referred to as curios. Ah, oh, cool. Oh, mm, kind of matches mm. tea pads. And right. he also, Josh also says he's always heard Cha Hai as uh, Gong Dao Bei. Yeah. So sharing 
cup cup would be this guy right here oh tea pot for mini tray maybe like a saucer mm. the long saucer or something yeah or I like think. the um just a little just a small the, the wooden tray yeah. that you go to serve okay and i have only heard tea boat for a kind of a bowl with a stand to put the teapot oh that's interesting oh. so it seems there's lots of different uses mm. out there and i think that's fine i don't think this is one of those things you know, it's not it's like a, it's a, not like fermented and oxidized right, that can right. cause some serious confusion. Right. This is and like, a lot of times you just need to ask to clarify that's what right. exactly like you said, are we yeah. talking about. It's just the stage; it's not the play, yeah. right? Right. And um, and Igor says hi. So hello, Igor. Welcome to the uh, stream. Hello. And uh, curio, curiosidad, curiosidad. Mm. So Ebenezer. Ebenezer, I think, translated curio into uh, Spanish, maybe, curiosidad. And yeah, so all comes from Latin. So we're all going to be using the same basic word there, English, probably German. I don't know. Um, but, you know, Spanish, it seems. Is that Spanish, Ebenezer? I think so. And Igor says, wow, Devin sounds it, Townsend t-shirt. Love his music. Sorry about off topic. It's totally okay. I wear this t-shirt just to get that comment. Every now and then. <laughs> you will feel sad if nobody said anything. Yeah, Igor, you and Brandon, who's not with us today, but Brandon also is a big Devin Townsend fan. So he's also Canadian. Just I'm sure you know that, but for anybody who doesn't know. So back on topic. Perhaps an heirloom. Uh, what was that? Uh, perhaps an heirloom. Uh, also, I absolutely agree. I love the tea trays that are quite large and almost feel like a nice piece of furniture unto themselves. Or that they are, or that uh, unto themselves, and they get is the phrase young de, with use. Oh, he's asking, and do they get young? Like young. Oh they, yeah, yes. And then he anglicized it by saying young de. Right, 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 right. <laughs> That's really good. Well, well, good anglicization. Um, so yeah, is that those big ones? Do they get young? Is that not as uh, much? Mm -hmm. Not as much because it's really hard to get that even. <laughs> If you use oh. that because it's big and with the tea, the right. outside and inside would be different color. Right, not right. Not much. It's just aesthetic. People love. Is that what you get thing. with the bracelets? If they those get oh, young. Oh yeah. Oh, that's what. Uh, do you remember mm. my long bracelets? If you guys yeah, your long the wooden one. I have the yeah, little one. When on my wrist. it started, it was green. It was like not a tinge of green. It was green. Green oh, wow. wood. Yeah, Lu Tan that kind. And now, now it's, it's brown. like brown with a little bit reddish. That's young. Yeah. Use my human oil. <laughs> Yep, yep. No shame in skin oil. That's a natural thing. So, and then Josh says, like tea boat for uh, a kind of quite small ceramic tea tray with an inner raised plate and a mini tray, but would never for wood that I've heard. Yeah, we've heard it with little wooden trays with a little catch underneath as well. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we have those, those ceramic ones with the little stand in the middle are nice too. Mm. And there's a stone too nowadays. Just really heavy. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, Black so that style. is good. We are out for the... Uh, so let's head back to the book and we'll go on to the next section. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did a sound effect with that one. Selection so, and use. So next is selection and usage, right on. So selection, no matter what types, there are four word rhyme that should be mastered while selecting, while selecting wide, flat, shallow, and smooth. That is, the surface of the tray should be wide so that it can hold more cups for more guests. The bottom should be flat and the cup can stand steadily. Shallow edges, concise surface and pouring smoothly. All the above aims at setting off the teacups and pots and making the set beautiful and easy to use. Usage. Connect a plastic pipe with the metal pipe which at the lower left quarter of the tray while using the monolayer tray. Put the plastic pipe into the water basin to exhaust the water on the tray. Interlayer tray is also named as double layer tray. There are draining structures with holes and frames on the upper layer and cistern in the under layer, which the wastewater is stored here. Because of the limited capacity, it is necessary to clean up in time in case that the wastewater runs out. Remember to take down the pots, cups, and fair cups while holding the tray in case breaking the beloved set accidentally. <laughs> Clean the wooden and bamboo trays with dry cloth after being used. 
Okay, bit of a bigger section. I'm gonna back it up here so you guys can see it. There we go. So selection. Um, yeah, wide, lots of friends, pretty understandable. Lots of friends, I guess you don't need a wide one during COVID, but once it's gone, you'll need one again. So <laughs> definitely grab a wide one. Um, flat, easy, clean, and steady. Um, shallow, these are all good tips. I thought flat and smooth were a little bit confusing, but I think um, in our translation, it's gonna be clarified, but Mm. I want to use that. Flat is more like an even word, like a, you know, if it's till this. Yeah, I'm going to show just us and right, show right. this table because this, this is a cool one with slats. So you see, it's got even though it has slats, the dowels aren't round. I remember we had one with round dowels, so that's not flat. And we all had that. The cups mm. were a little bit tippy. So if you put that there, a yeah. little bit annoying, right? Mm. This one, I like this flat structure is better if you're going to like have slats. Out. Yeah, especially if you have really thin, expensive yeah. cups which we don't anymore. Right. I'm just kidding, we didn't break one. I, I just looked really serious. All right, so let's go back to the book because I'm going over the, uh, <laughs> I'm going over word by word. But this wasn't sure, I, I wasn't sure why shallow, actually. The, all of them make perfect sense, mm -hmm. but I'm not really sure why they the, uh, focus on shallow edges. I guess that's for the bowl, you don't want to. The shallow edge. Oh, oh, oh. Just Here, coming back, say, coming back. The edge is more like this. This oh, one, you can don't they want see that. that? Yeah. Let me uh, come back to. Um... It's not just something like essential. So it's this. You don't want that to be like you know this deep. You want it. It's just like a little drop. It's a, in general a surface with a little dent because it will come down. Move it's, the water you don't to want the center. It to, too much up and down on tea table. When you use, you have more danger. You know of flip over or tip or anything. Right. So right. those suggestions are really basic. Like all the other right all the other uh, like shallow like the, you know like how they said uh, the book suggested choosing teapot choosing other things are mm. like not, those not are really practical points. these are really practical yes you can go yes. wild and choose what you like but those are basic things or yeah. like you want that to simplistic because it's a surface for the main main roles leading characters to play sure. so you don't want to draw much yeah. attention and also it's something in the open phase yeah. so it kind of a class dirt if you have lots of carvings and lots right. of stuff on the edge you will spend a lot of time to clean right, that right so it's a really practical yeah I consideration think, but exactly. once you are you know advanced to the next level you can do basically you'll be familiar you with these things i think it's a really good book in that regard and all for all the different things especially if you're getting started what you what causes you to be unsure is uh, what am I? What should I consider? You don't even know, so mm -hmm. it helps tell you. Yeah, these are the basic things to consider, and then just go for it. Yeah, and you can avoid trouble with and use easy to use, easy like to use. water to flow out. Sometimes you don't think about it till you actually use that for a period of time. You realize, oh, this one doesn't. The water kind of all stuck on one corner. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. Really or it's too small for how much I'm going to be drinking tea. I yeah. have to empty that several times yeah. per session. Yeah, it's that's... just a basic, uh, very practical thing. Right. But I do notice when you uh, sometimes get into tea culture because those things seems to be fancied up. They always uh, get into more advanced while not much talking about those basic. They things. almost skip over the basics. Yes, which it's... again, why I like the book because yes. it doesn't. It actually, we don't even dive into the advanced stuff because there's mm -hmm. no point mm -hmm. if you don't give people the basics to make a decent decision. And mm -hmm. I think that's what gets people shocked sometimes and hard right. to move forward because they've got all this information that's pretty medium or advanced and they're right. like, but oh, what about the basics? Right, right. right. like people would choose a using teapot, it's all considering the clay. Well, honestly, clay is really hard to... Uh, say for people who just getting into you don't have experience right yeah, yeah. well their their teapot doesn't pour well yeah or, or doesn't have an opening big enough for a, maybe their right, the, the rock tea they were hoping to things. put in it yeah yeah really basic so basically though the first paragraph was um pretty good so shallow is the edge so it's not so related to oh no smooth and flat were also kind of so flat is more the surface and i think smooth is actually water more, it's more smooth about flow, water right flow. yeah so that's a little bit um basically you don't want it to puddle mm -hmm. so you want to have a nice gradient to flow out um so but i don't think so that was I necessarily think that was obvious perfect. there oh okay 
uh, oh, pouring smoothly, concise surface and pouring smoothly. So yeah, yeah I guess it is, it is pretty, clear. pretty clear. You want to get the water off the table. You don't want to sit there all day and just evaporate. Yes. And in this usage part, was that a... Um, usage was, I have okay right under it, but then I have it one by one. Mm -hmm. um, I, I found number one was cute. It's so specific. Put that pipe in the lower left quarter. Well, most of ours are the lower right quarter, but it doesn't matter. It just yeah. connect your pipe to the metal right. drain thing, or if you it's gotta not, drain it, otherwise yeah. uh, it will make a mess. Because sometimes people don't know what to do with that. Right. Why there a hole? Yeah. Why there's a hole? So basically, yeah. you get a little piece of pipe from Home Depot and connect it to your waste basin. Hopefully, it came with the pipe. If you go to a tea shop, ask them for a little piece of pipe. <laughs> and. Um, and yeah, I'd love to know what kind of trays you guys have out there. Like, do you guys have the ones where you have to empty that every now and then? Mm -hmm. Or are you guys like plumbed up? We have a couple different settings for tea in our house. We have a, 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 north, a south window station that's not plumbed. We dry brew there. Yeah, that only happens in the winter. In the winter, because <laughs> it's our sunniest location in the house. Mm -hmm. Then we have our other tea table, which has the plumbing in it to a basin, though. It's not plumbed to a drain. It's not so fancy, but yeah. that's pretty good. We only have to empty that once every now and then. Water the garden with the tea water. Super nutritious. And the coolest thing is that I know somebody who do the tea table uh, down the drain, which is the dishwasher. I thought that was pretty cute. Oh yeah, the dishwasher right? drain. Yeah, yeah, that's totally. Oh yeah, I remember that. Just uh, after everything's clean, you just uh, in the kitchen, you just take out the tea table on top of the dishwasher and uh, drain the water in the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. And then uh, number two is. Uh, Oh, it's just the, um, those are the catch ones, the ones with the basin like we were showing earlier. Yeah, just so I really, that. Yeah, I, and I know we've got caught every now and then we're brewing or you're in a big brewing session and the conversation's intense and fun and then suddenly your table is wet, you're like, oh my God, and your tray is full full, which is super hard to move without even more spill. Yeah. So those are, uh, it's really easy to get caught mm. with those. So four no. and three and four is pretty clear, I think. Yeah, three is great advice. I, quite, yeah. uh, I sometimes don't do that and I sometimes yeah. regret it, but usually I just walk super carefully when I pick right. up the whole set. Right. But it's better to remove them. It's really good advice. And four is mm. easy to forget, right? How often do we finish and we don't do a little wipe? This is really good advice too. Oh, right. just a little yes. wipe. I always uh, forget. Just, usually... uh, just to say the difference. This is great. If you don't want to, you're not like me. You just uh, wipe that and be really disciplined. That's great. But bamboo and wood are different. Mm. Bamboo is okay to be always wet. Mm -hmm. That's a so good point. So my, my way of doing that, because I'm really lazy, I just make sure it's always wet. Because my tea table is bamboo. So bamboo can be in the water and stuff. It doesn't just it doesn't like a dry and wet. Dry it's not going to rot. Mm, mm. It doesn't. But wood, you might want to be more uh, careful with. I guess you just always wipe it. Give it a little wipe. Yeah. Let's talk about teacup now. Let's talk about teacups after we head over to the comments. We got some okay. comments coming in. So what have we got here? We've got um. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, absolutely agree. I love the tea trays. They're quite large. And, oh, oh, no, we got that one. Tea bowl for kind of a small ceramic tea tray. Inner rings. Okay, got that. That's why I have a tea brush. Ah. So, so Josh says that's why I have a tea brush to keep an even patina mm. on my tray. Perfect. That is a great idea. And it's good to just keep care of it. And it, it's kind of fun, actually, to kind of swoosh the water with the tea brush. And by fun, I mean, like, if you're in that whole, like, this tea is a pretty mellow tea. It gets you in that kind of... A relaxed vibe it's just kind of a relaxing physical thing to do just like brewing is kind of common Igor says I buy three months ago a big tea tray not necessarily not necessary but it's great and comfortable solid wood tray nice mm. nice I'm really I like big that's one cool too. I don't know if you're on Instagram or whatever any in social media but if you could shoot us a picture of it I would really love to see it um, I love to see people's tea gear it's just so beautiful Josh says, God, yeah, the round dowels are the worst. Took me ages to find a completely flat dowel tray that I liked and was mm. big enough. Mm. Also, one with both a basin and an optional pipe leading to a bucket. As I drink so much tea emptying, the inner tray basin was really unpleasant so often. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I agree. I really like for our regular drinking, it's 
pretty much got to be uh, plumbed to a pretty large basin. Mm. Okay, who's excited for teacups? Oh, there. Oh, I'm trying to be. <laughs> my Google turned on. Okay. Google, silly Google. Let's get down to the teacups. Mm -hmm. Look at these beautiful little teacups. And we've got a few here to show off for you too. Whoops. All right. Well, you can do all, I think. It's a short one. Yeah, this is a short section, so I'm going to blow through it and then we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. Teacup. An ideal teacup makes you feel happy. Aww. Drinking with a big cup satisfy a craving for you, while with a little cup remain the fragrance to the end and refresh your mind. Hmm. Function. Teacup is also named Ping Ming Cup, which is used to taste tea soup. Types. The material of the cup are porcelain, pottery, sand fired, glasses, etc. They are in the shape of bamboo hats, semicircular, bowl shaped, strainer cup, etc. They are various choices. Selections. Tasting different tea with different cups, for example, to make it convenient to appreciate the color of puar. It is better to use a cup with white inside or lower surface. Select the appropriate cup to match the color and shape with the pot aesthetically. Usage. While drinking, pinch the body of the cup with both thumb and forefinger. Hold the button with middle finger. Put away ring finger and little finger, then enjoy. Two, some cups are used together with a saucer, while some are used as single cups. All right, that is the section. So the first part, I just love that the ideal teacup makes you feel happy. Okay, this mm -hmm. is this is like a this is like a fundamental truth of the universe. I think we can all agree. Yeah. So other than that, I think it's pretty clear. Um, big right. cups are for when you're thirsty, satisfy craving, while little cups help the fragrance linger and more like let you get into the tea really analyze that for mm -hmm. tasting less mm -hmm. chugging um, yes function uh is for tasting tea right uh, yes. i think that's the only thing i didn't know i didn't know what is ping ming cup ping means taste oh. ming means tea cup is cup uh bay <laughs> bay but what so, is uh what ming and cha are two different ways to express tea yeah Tea has many names, okay, like okay. to say it, but... Uh, so literally, tea tasting cup. Yes. Ping Ming cup. So the difference, if, if you say tea cup, we don't... Uh, maybe now it's more popular, people would think about this size, but if you say tea cup, a big mug, you know, the Chinese uh, mug tumbler. with the lid and tumbler, those are all tea cup. Like, right. can be anything with tea in it, that's a tea cup. All right. So, but if you say Ping Ming Bei, it's pretty. It's the this dude right the, here. The size the has to be mini, okay. compared to a regular, you know, mm -hmm. tumbler. Mm -hmm. Okay, got mm -hmm. you. Okay, that's so that's good. I didn't know that. I hope that's helpful for you guys. Um, and it, again, on our side, because we're all in the like, the super tasting kind of vibe. We're used to the mm -hmm. Ping Ming Bay, but in it's, China, you often see right. it just a regular tumbler, or you ask for a teacup, you'll get a glass of tea. The same, with even in this uh, environment, I think if you say teacup, people will think about Western, the Western yeah, teacup, which is a, a different mm, size that's true. and shape too. True. Right, so if you say Ping Ming Bei, it's pretty specific to this. Right, mm. okay, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. And then um, types, okay, I love types. So we brought a few, Let's go to the it's table. more of shapes rather than... Oh, it also mentioned the material. My bad. So we brought a bunch of... Uh, yeah, they did do a lot of shape though, right? So they've got right. the uh, the small bowl. I'm just chugging the tea. <laughs> right? This is one that <laughs> I actually it, you know? made in uh, in uh, Jingdezhi, where we got the Gaiwan too. Um, so uh, sorry for the uh, really low-end paint job, but I'm just showing you the shape, that sort of bowl shape. Um, teacup and then there was what you're drinking from more of the the hat the bamboo hat style a little cup. bit to the bamboo hat style yeah but the typical one would be even more drastic right I have a blue one that is more drastic mm -hmm. and the trouble with more drastic is more drastic is more tippy um, mm -hmm. yeah so just a little a few cups there so if you guys have cool cups like take pictures and put them on Instagram we love to see yes. those too 
And uh, but otherwise, I think types was okay, right? You've mm. got uh, you know what? Tag us on Instagram and show us your favorite cup. Yeah, that's what I mean when I say right, show right. us. Like you got to tag oh, okay. us, or I, we may never see it. But I'm glad you said it. <laughs> yeah. So definitely tag us. I'll go back to the book though, because it, the types was pretty clear too, right? You've mm -hmm. got a bunch different of different shapes and, shapes and different like stuff. That. Sandfired, I think, means like yeasting, yeasting? like yeah. clay, right? Mm -hmm. um, glass, um, and then the, you have all kinds of s shapes. Mm -hmm. Strainer cup, though, I guess that's a, that's a different whole. Uh, that's like our travel set. We have the easy to use travel set, which the oh. strainers, uh, the tea goes in the strainer, sits in the cup, and come out. Right, right, right. And some of them, you would you consider the same thing when they have the strainer and you drink from it, and it just strains mm -hmm. right before your lips, yeah. kind of thing. Uh -huh. oh, okay, yeah. Sometimes it's a mug with a strainer in it, so you can do like grandpa style, uh -huh. but you don't have to do the. What do you do with the strainer? The strainer has to come it's out. It's built in. It's built into the, like, in half of, like, let's say you drink from here. Yeah. Oh, boy. We better show them us. They, they got to see this big. If, the, if you're going to drink from here, there might be a strainer across, but down here. Oh, those ones. No. Okay. That's not what they're talking why? about. Why? Because those are not Chinese design. So right. that's why it wouldn't cover this. There's nothing wrong with right, those right. designs. Just say this is not. The strainer one, the Chinese call it Tong Xin Bei, Sam Heart. Uh, uh, same circle heart. You know when you draw a circle? Oh, they concentric have circle. Oh, yes. So that's how we call See, those cups. Because they are... Tong Bei. Yeah. So they have the same center. But strainer and outside. So kind of oh. implying to those oh, ones that we have. And then have. you pull the strainer out. You tap, tap, tap. Put that on a saucer. Right. And then you can drink the tea. And right. And the leaf is out. Right. Oh, okay. Not saying good and bad, just saying this is what this I get it. word no, I get means. It. I get it. Because right. the other one, you guys would just do full grandpa style. There's well, no, we need, yeah. no need for a strainer there. Yeah. You've got lips to spit out the leaf. Mm. Right? And then back to the book. You have to make that sound. Yeah, yeah. The, the, everybody knows that, right? If you guys have done grandpa style, you know the... Especially if it's you got like puar or something, it's not yeah. so pleasant. Green tea, you can usually eat it, but yeah, for us, filter has a good not just about the teas because we really don't mind have a little bit of spit out, um, but to take it out so it's not mm. there all the time. Right. That's the major difference for That's us. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So um, selections. Mm -hmm. I like the. It's a little bit. So they don't dive into it too much here. But you can they, talk about that later. They did in the tea types how they match the tea to the cup, which is really yeah. fun. And I think we did talk about that in the um, tea section, right? They talk about different colors of tea set to match yeah, your tea. Yeah, and I also want to talk about that later. Okay, cool. At the end. Yeah, because yeah. I found that the whole thing is pretty simple. And uh, I oh, think yeah. you guys might be interested in the tea shape, uh, the tea cup and selection. Oh, in the shape? Right. Okay. Well, yeah. basically, we can probably jump there because usage was really clear. Right. Um, when drinking, you know, I think everybody knows how to hold a teacup that you drop your, if it's a big one like this, I put my ring finger under, but mm -hmm. if it's a little guy, you might put your middle finger under for support. Sometimes you might be a little cavalier and don't mm -hmm. put anything. I usually hold top, mm. so it's not very hot. Yep. That's the gist of it, I guess. And some cups have a saucer, which I was a little bit sad because we have very few cups with saucers. We have a cup saucer, but it's... Oh, we do have the clay cup still, or do we break it? We've got a yeasting <laughs> saucer, but I haven't seen the yeasting cup forever. I think it maybe died. Yeah. Poor guy. So anyway, now my next goal is to get some cups that come with saucer, because I think that's adorable. You have oh a, yeah? Oh yeah, have a little saucer and why not? <laughs> what are the opposite? I was like, what's the point? <laughs> oh my gosh, so practical, too practical. <laughs> So you want to go back and chat about So I just about, want to chat mm. about it because in that session, it quickly talked about, uh, you know, for you want a light color or the uh, uh, light color or white and you choose that. One thing wasn't much mentioned for a lot of people is the whole aesthetic. So uh, in the book, it mentioned about choosing your cup based on your teapot or gaiwan. Oh, that was completely left out. Right? So in the, in the translation, yeah. Yeah, I, so that was to match the whole setup. It looks oh, very enjoyable. Might be here. It's here, but we didn't emphasize on that. And right. it's not a, it's often 
overlooked when talking about the tea cup or tea. We a lot of times we really just the tea guy one is guy one and tea cup is tea cup. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if we're talking about tea cultures and setting up for experience, experiential um, things, so kind of a, you want to consider the shape with of guy one vis a vis the tea cup. Right. Like, okay. You know, like if this guy one matches with those clay ones, it's kind of ugly. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that to just drinking tea at home by myself. Right, right. But, but uh, if, if I have a friend coming over, over right, I wouldn't choose these ones, right? Right, right. So that's just the one thing I want to mention. But mostly, I think when we talk about the tea cup, there are different shape, mm. right? And first of all, materials people care about. Uh, like teapot, guy one, porous, non-porous is a big thing when it comes to uh, tea. You're choosing green teas, usually we don't recommend with uh, very porous uh, materials. You right. want something non-porous, uh, glass, porcelain, all good. So I want to talk about the shape quickly. Sure. Because the initial translation here, one party is saying, uh, it says that drinking with a big cup satisfying a craving. Right, right. For many people, it feels like I'm thirsty. That's why I'm drinking for this craving. Oh, uh, that's what I thought I meant. Yes, uh, precisely. Yes. I didn't I mention it because I kind of uh, would, was thinking about saving it for the end. Right. In the end, it's actually uh, talking about a feeling of sat- satisfying. Did you like uh, how? It's not just a thirst. Like a pu'er, we often use big cups. Right. Right? And uh, like this is a pretty good pu'er cup because it's uh, relatively big and it's really wide. Mm. So it's good for cooling too. Pu'er is a tea that is not just about uh, aroma. Like oolong, you would think as aroma, uh, flavor tea, while pu'er is about the most feel, aftertaste, mm. more essential more um different profile more of calming a, yeah, yeah of a, their uh characteristics right. and what you are tasting almost like different personalities that's right like mm. green tea you want to refresh it right mm. cheap green teas have heavy flavors almost like green wulong right but good expensive ones are almost so delicate this is what the essence of green tea is is right. the spring is the brisk is that light Refreshness, right? So it's a glass. Well, poor. We often recommend people with a big cups, right? So when you have a sip and the hot liquor in, it really give your body warm up to really feel that and old tree ancient trees, right? So it's, it's it's not again. You can use any cup you like, but we often say you know those mini tasting cups. Those are oolong. You mo- right. mostly taste in your mouth. The right. flavor, the layers, is more um, palate based with the right. aftertaste and stuff. But poor and dark tea, especially aged tea, you are talking about your body feelings too. Right, like our chia liang cha. So you want a sufficient mm. quantity to experience the mouth feel yes. and to experience the uh, the whole sensation of the tea. Yes. So you will see a lot of uh, big cups. Uh, if you see that in China, those are a lot of times are poor cups. Oh. And uh, this one is a really good shape for having, it's a little bit too big for having, but you can still do it for uh, oolong. It's right. almost like a combination of smelling cup vis-a-vis cup. So right. it has this uh, uh, long, long tall. tall. So mm. it, mm, if the lid would, I mean, if the edge wasn't so open, it would be even better. So it really concentrates. Focus that. the aroma. Yes, while at the same time, um, help the aroma be layered because there's a time of travel right, right here. You right. know, that kind of right. thing. So those are different shapes that can help you enjoy different teas. But again, it's not something that you have to do. Right, right. <laughs> it's just some interesting thing if you want to. It's e- something people can explore. play with too and yeah. try. You know, uh, you know, if you don't mind doing the dishes, try your tea th- with different cups at the same sitting. Why mm. not? Right. See what different experiences you get from them. Mm-hmm. Shall we see if there's questions and comments? Mm-hmm.
All right, so cover that on tea tray. Uh, oh, and Josh says, since you asked, send a picture of my setup today. Haha, -ha. definitely Ping Ming Bay for me, but never heard that term before. Today, I learned. Yay, that's what we're here for. I have so many cups. I have a set for every tea type, even Danton. Mm. Oh, wow. Even uh, like specific oolong cups. That's really high. Nice. Uh, Josh also sent a picture of one of my many drawers of cups. Haha, -ha, I have mm. a problem. Yeah, sounds like you might need professional help, Josh. <laughs> she has a similar thing with teapots, but luckily there's not many stores I'm getting here. better. I'm really I think you're better, better because my laziness you can't buy overcome them here. a lot of stuff. Yeah, and Igor says for test and try new tea, I always use small white gaiwan and small and white teacup. Yeah, Absolutely. that's a safe. We that's a that really too. safe move. I uh, like. Yeah. It gives you a lot of control. A small gaiwan gives you a ton of control over the brew. Mm -hmm. um, delicate, but I find it a bit tricky sometimes because I'm a little bit uh, clunky, mm. but. Because yeah. you're doing test and try, that's what you want. But it's easy a to baseline. recover, right? If you right? mess up a brew, you can start and then, over. And most important, next time you would probably know the baseline of this tea and choose accordingly. Right. Like how we mm. uh, do seminars and stuff, and people are watching me brew. I was like, don't don't think too much of my brew because my I have my purpose of brewing and to match right. my. Because when I'm doing the uh, seminars, I'm trying to explain certain points by. You know the brewing stuff mm. so some you you will see me you know rinse a tea for a long time or not rinsing a tea right. or brew a tea for ultra intense or right. uh flushing yeah, we're fusion. not we're not doing the standard walkthrough yes. of the tea because i noticed when i brew tea that everybody's watching feel like oh maybe this is how you brew black tea or this is how you right. brew for but that's not it. Yeah, seminars that you always I, you always give them a clear instruction. Don't do what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Sometimes doing... I even brew and dump because I need some more stuff to you got for yeah, later points. Move it along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So that uh, wraps up this episode of episode nine of Sunday Tea Book China Tea. Um, next week we are diving into turn the page so I can remember. Yes, covered bowl, aka a covered bowl. Go go go, guy one. Uh, everyone's favorite uh, drinking vessel and brewing vessel. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm, I haven't read the section, but I'm sure they'll talk about that. And if we have time, we'll also do the sharing cup or mm. the fair cup or the, uh, um, I don't remember the Chinese names. Really. Gong dao bei. Right, right, right. Gong dao bei. Mm. So tune in <laughs> next week. We're going to have a great time. Um, yes. If you liked the episode and you found this useful and you mm -hmm. learned lots, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And yeah. of course, if you really want to help the channel and help us out and help Gen T prosper, check out our website and indulge yourself in some amazing tea, maybe Chen Liang Cha 2012. Yeah. Maybe look ahead to our new episodes. We've got all the teas that we're going to be brewing coming up, which as I explained in the earlier in the episode, I right. totally pick based on... It's actually great. You can enjoy some great tea and we can continue our passion. Yeah. So um, subscribe, like, hit the notification bell, mm -hmm. and most of all, keep steeping. Keep, keep steeping. steeping. <laughs> Here we go. I gotta have some code. Right. I can't find my button to close the whole thing. Here we go. Bye-bye.